seven day Cause, Sunday. Because Sunday starts the week, right? That's right. So. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, <laughs> on Sunday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday. Count them up. That makes sense. It make perfect sense. Yeah. It got something in it she might not Do like. Do not it. use this. Yeah, I know it has something wrong with <laughs> Do not use Crisco. Uh, I haven't seen Crisco in a long time, though. It look good, don't it? And that look, don't it? the way they package it, don't the package it look good? The packaging looks very nice, but yeah. it's deceiving. Nice and sexy. So, it's not, it's not good, Christian. Yeah, but cooking. he can cook though. I be cooking spaghetti and stuff like that, but I never cooked the vegan meal. You know what I'm saying? Vegan might be a little different. No, mm -hmm. it's just pasta. They might, they might boil their pastas a little hard, you know, and like a, a little soft. I don't, I don't know. It's vegan. But I'm gonna. Try this out and see. It's not done, and I can tell you that now it ain't, hasn't been in there long enough. <laughs> oh! It's hard. <laughs> hard. Definitely not done. That needs to go in for like a good uh, 10 more minutes. See, now what I usually, what I usually would do, look on here and I'd be like, okay, 10 minutes. And I'll put my time on for 10 mm -hmm. 11 minutes. And after 10 11 minutes, then I'm going to taste it and see if it's soft or not. Not I keep letting it boil. It's a lot better. It ain't dryness. Definitely not dryness. It's that I never ate this kind of meal before with mushroom. I don't even like mushroom like that. But here I am eating it. Sometimes you have to do things that you don't like doing to get to where you're trying to get to. But it's all a sacrifice. But you're hungry though. Okay, I'm so hungry. you're going to eat it. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat it. You got no choice. Definitely. No, I never um, had like this pasta before, mm -hmm. so this is my first time trying it. Mm -hmm. Now I've tried something like it, similar to it, mm -hmm. I've made it before, but this was like a different recipe, and it's not that bad. Oh yeah? I don't think it's bad. Oh, you know, you ain't tried it yet. Yes, I did. It's not that bad? Mm -mm. So did I just do a good job? Yeah, you did, like, with my help, you know what I'm saying? Cause yeah, well, I help because I don't cook with you. I'm gonna cook. If you so with my help, you did pretty good. Nah, she would let me get on that grill out there. Now I definitely would have put down on that chicken on the grill. Not you know what I'm chicken. Mm. Steak. If she eats steak, I do steak. If she eats shrimp, I do shrimp. If she want lobster, I do lobster. Whatever she want. Yeah. But she don't eat none of that good stuff, y'all. First of all, he said lobster. That's like the cockroach of the sea. Oh, Lord, come on now. <laughs> All y'all eat lobster, so we don't want to tell us we don't want to eat it, though. Most people that no. do it right now, y'all eat lobster. No. Vegan? Vegans don't eat. They How eat. many vegans we got out there that's viewing right now? Raise y'all hand. I thought so. So she was like, it's just food, it's just food, you know, so that's how, that's how I look at it. Ain't nothing but food, you know what I'm saying? I can let this control me, you know what I'm saying? Some dang on meat. So I ain't for let no meat control me. Ain't no meat on him. So it's good without the meat. I don't need meat now. Meat don't run me. I run meat. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I run the meat. I tell the meat what to do. Okay. So for a whole seven days, you can go without the meat because you're going to tell the meat what to do. Yes, I can. I can, no. If I was on a challenge, I can. I challenge you to go three days <laughs> vegan. Yeah, see? You challenging me? Your mind got to be strong enough. So you challenging me? I'm challenging you to go three days to go vegan. All right, so if I win, you know And what you I have to know exactly what not to eat because it's not just meat. You got all your dairy products, which is cheese, milk, <laughs> See, I don't know. It ain't that good, do you? <laughs> ain't that good with that now. A vegetarian then. What's that? Okay, what's that? No meat. Just no meat. So you're telling me for three days, no meat. No Alright, so what do I get for the challenge? I'm saying, it's always a prize or something you get, right? When you get challenged? No. No? The prize is that you've actually overclaimed, like... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what's up, family? It's your bit, bro! K.O.
on this edition of the Prison to Power show coming up is my girl Jasmine Crenshaw and she goes to my church. I'm telling you, she's an entrepreneur and she's going to be teaching y'all some entrepreneurship skills. How she came up, how she came from the bottom to the top. And the thing about it is, if she can do it, you can do it. There's no excuse. So y'all get ready for Jasmine Crenshaw coming through right now with your big bro KO. Listen, we just got done eating. We did something different. We did something healthy. Because you know I always talk about the baked beans and the macaroni. But the thing about it is that kind of food is unhealthy. So I wanted to do something healthy today. Something real healthy. So we cooked a healthy meal. Y'all seen it. So now we're finna get into the, the nitty gritty with it. We're finna get into the meat. So y'all get ready for the Prison to Power show with your big bro. KO. Listen. I told you. We back with a, another edition of the Prison to Power show with your big bro KO. And I got my girl... Um, Jasmine Crenshaw, she's right here. She's going to be sharing her story, you know, how she got started with her business and everything. So we welcome y'all to the Prison to Power show with your big bro, KO, Father Moore Do. I'm going to introduce my first guest. She's going to inspire and empower you guys. So what's going on, sis? Everything is great. That's what's up. That's what's great. up. Nah. We just came from the kitchen and we just got done eating. I appreciate that. I appreciate you putting me down with the vegan meal. Yeah. So that's what. So how did you get? How did you get started with the whole vegan meal thing? Um, it was pretty much like a small transition for me, and I wanted to do something different, and I wanted to eat healthier, and I knew that eating healthy is also good for me, but I can also um, get healthy benefits and. A lot of good things can come from just eating right. So, with me being able to work out all the time, I can eat healthy. That helps, you know, my body get how I need to be. So, yeah. But it's very important to eat healthy because I'm not just a truck driver. I'm also an artist. I'm a motivational speaker. I got so many hats. So I can't just consume myself the truck driver just eating all that that greasy nasty food. So what she showed me today with the vegan, man, I'm taking that into, into consideration. You know, and it's all a mind thing being able to, you know, eat that kind of stuff like just say just just to say, hey, I'm not gonna eat no meat right there. So she put me down on it. I appreciate that though. You're welcome, no problem. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your business and tell me how you got started, man. Let the viewing audience know how did you get started and a little bit about your business. Well, first, I'm just tell y'all a little about a little bit about myself. Um, I'm 23, and I actually have a fashion merchandising degree, and I actually started taking pictures when I was in the 11th grade. And when I started taking pictures, it was just a hobby. And my parents would say, well, shoot, we need to get you a camera because you always taking pictures of everything, like food. I was always taking pictures of food. You know how people go when they get to a restaurant, they like to take pictures of food, right, Snapchat, right. or whatever. But that's how I was. So um, I remember my senior year, my parents bought me a camera. And right. then I ended up getting a MacBook, like when I graduated. Um, I believe it was sometime during college and then when I started taking pictures after I graduated I actually turned it into a business so a lot of people was like wanting me to do pictures for like birthday parties mm -hmm. or just like church event mostly church events and stuff like that so I was making like maybe two hundred dollars now you gotta remember I'm young you right. know what I'm saying I just graduated high school so I'm making like $200 a night or more, you know. So I was like, dang, let me turn this into a business. That's you right. know what I mean? And it was like something I love to do also. Right, right. Like you can't beat that, you know. Exactly. You love doing something and also you're making money That's doing right. it. So um, that was a win-win for me. And I started that as a business. And I actually didn't take it as serious as I should have right. because I could have grown it and it could have actually turned into a bigger company for me right. but um i actually wanted to like pursue other things i haven't given photography up okay. um but it's other things that i'm like working on right now and that was like the break for me actually going into ygm and starting that now what was the process of getting it started starting your business so once i started my photography business um i was actually in destin 
for my mom's conference and I was taking pictures and I saw so many young people around me that was like, you got all this stuff, you got all this equipment, you know what I'm saying, I wish I could do this, do that, or whatever. And it was just like, oh my God, like how can I help these young people just want to build and actually grow their uh, careers and become an entrepreneur entrepreneur and just want to be able to make their own money on their own and not have to go to a nine to five every day even if you were right. you still do your own thing on the side so i was like well i want to be able to motivate the young people around me even if they're not owning their own businesses at the moment they get to see like what i'm doing mm -hmm. and i'm motivating them to just want to become a better individual so it was like, well, you know, gold mines, this is it. And this can touch so many young people, mm. and it could actually change some lives. Amen. And so I started that back in 2011, and it was just like family and friends, close friends and stuff. Right, right. And so um, I didn't think of how big at the moment, but until people actually started telling me like you know this is something great that you have like you can really turn this into something big and really help a lot of people so that's what i thought and i made my first website mm -hmm. and the first what was the name of your first website it was young gold mines okay. and um then it died down after that and it was like i wasn't really consistent with it so it came back around in 2015 so within that time period that's like a whole like what five four years mm -hmm. so 2016 came and it was like okay i'm slacking on this i'm sleeping on my vision you know right, right. so i made another website and i was like oh my god i'm finally doing this like i made up in my mind like making these websites <laughs> i made up in my mind like okay i gotta do this like now you know because i mean I can't just keep sleeping on this. Right. Like I have to get it done. So I created the website and um, I did a photo shoot last summer. I did a photo shoot last summer and it got a lot of a lot of buzz or whatever on social media. Oh wow. And so um, once I did the photo shoot, it went from the photo shoot to me creating my own slides, designing my own slides, which are shoes. Okay. And so um, a lot of the people that are a part of YGM are mostly athletes now or okay. like um, entrepreneurs. Like my um, friend of mine, she's like my little sister. She has her own um, a lash tech, like she does lashes. Okay. Um, business in Florida in Pensacola. Her name is Giselle. Okay. And Hi, I have, Giselle. <laughs> and then I have my partner who is my cousin Gerald. He plays for Utah State. Gerald Bright. Um, then I also have another friend of mine that did the photo shoot for me. His name is uh, actually Askew Media okay. on Instagram. Askew Media okay. on Instagram. And um, he's really good. He actually does like graphic design and stuff like that. But all of these are like entrepreneurs that I'm like connected to. That's good. And I use particularly them mm -hmm. for when I want something done so other people can actually see, you know, their work. Right. Now, y'all hear what she said, right? She said these are other entrepreneurs that she are connected with. And I always say when you want to be successful, you got to get around people that's doing it. Get around successful people. Right. If you if you hang around losers, you're going to be a loser. If you hang around people that's not doing nothing, don't want nothing out of life, that's what's going to carry on to you. Right. And you're going to be that person that's not going to want nothing out of life and become a loser. So you got to get around people that are doing something in life and trying to be where you need to be. Connect with the right people. That's very important. So she just said something that's very important. Have there ever been a time that you felt like giving up? Yes, like 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, I went through a depressing like stage in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I just remember 2015, I was like in a bad like two month like breakup. It wasn't really like a relationship, mm -hmm. but it really broke me to the point where 
um, I changed. It changed me and my character and the way I would carry myself. So I became very depressed and I would literally like wake up in the morning like, what is my purpose and why am I here? Mm. And I knew like, I'm, I'm great. Like at whatever I do, like whatever I put my mind to, I'm great. That's right. So I was able to be strong enough in my mind to overcome my depression mm. and to just like start talking to God. Like I felt like that's what sustained me really honestly right. was just me talking to God. I would be in my room at night just talking to God. Like even by myself, people would talk to think I'm crazy at my house. <laughs> talk to myself in my room. I'm talking to God, having a conversation. But um, I was really in a dark place and I felt it coming back last year, 2017. And same situation, you know, dealing with people feeling like I may not have been good enough or I, was, I wasn't doing the much, you know, enough for people. Mm -hmm. So me just having the wrong people around me kind of affected um the situation even more and i felt like i just had to just walk away from certain people and realize like maybe these people aren't good to be in my life you mm. know right um so i decided to make some changes and get rid of some friends and even if it was like people in my family that i felt like that wasn't going to work and that was just like just wanted to like drag along because of they saw something and just people in general that was around me I just felt like they wanted to be around because they saw the greatness in me right right and a lot of people didn't want to bring nothing to the table but they wanted a piece of the pot they <laughs> wanted you know what I'm saying if we was throwing this event they wanted the money right, right. they wanted their cut you know yeah. what I'm saying it was, it's, it was just I had to make up in my mind like this is not healthy and right. you're not going to actually reach the goals that you need to reach if you keep allowing this to happen. Right. These are like bad habits that you're holding on to and it's like a lot of times we don't want to let go or we feel like we're hurting people when we walk away right. but a lot of times that's the best for us and for them. Right, right. So, so what, what kept you focused and, 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 and kept going? Pretty much talking to God. Talking to God? I, Promise so you talking to God in my room at night. I would never like cry. I'm like a very tough person. Right. Like I don't want people to see the emotional side of me. Right, right. So I'm not very sentimental. I hate like, you know, like anything like that shows emotion. Like I'm not, mm -mm. I'm a very close person and I would only show my emotions if I'm in a room by myself alone. Okay. So being in a place where I was able to just talk to God and just me and Him. So you do believe in that God? Was, yes, I yeah. do believe in God. But you're Christian? Yes. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you're Christian, y'all. So you believe in God, Jesus Christ. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yeshua. <laughs> That's right, Yeshua. He will do so, it. So, yeah. Um, talking to God and just trying to remain positive, I would like literally write in a notebook that I had in my room and I would say I am strong, I am a leader, I am confident. I had like at least 50 things list listed as of I am That's right. and I would like just speak that into the atmosphere That's right. when I would wake up in the morning before I go to bed at night when I pray. I'm not gonna lie, it's not, I've missed some nights where I didn't pray, but I would definitely wake up and be like, God, I forgot to I'm sure we this. all have done that. Before. Yeah, so <laughs> I would do that and I would read those things to myself. Um, and that built up my self esteem. Right, 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 right. And I had to build up my own confidence because I had nobody else to do it for me. Right. So that really is what kept me going. Well, so where you at now with Young Gold Mines? Um, now, um, I'm actually speaking in Virginia in May. Oh, in May? Yes. Okay. How are you, how you getting all your, your bookings and stuff like that? Um, honestly, mostly through my parents. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Your parents working with you? 
Yeah, mostly my connects come with my parents. You know, the business minded side of them just right. wanting to connect in. That's right. Um, but it's um a conference, okay. and I actually um got it while I was out in Vegas. That's what's up. And um, we were actually at a table, and we we're uh, eating, and it was talking about my website. My mom just so happened to just bring it up, and it was like, oh, really? And then the one of the bishops was like. Well, I have um, one of my granddaughters, she's a makeup artist, and he was like, well, I would like for you to come and do an entire workshop for the conference, wow. and we'll call it Young Gold Mines. Wow. And I was like, I was just like, oh, wow, this is going to be like my first big event that I put on that's actually going to mm. be called Young Gold Mines, you know, right, right. Um, that actually relates to what I'm trying to do. Okay, okay. Now... As far as, you know, we know we got young viewers and young people out there listening, you know, and I'm big when it comes to, you know, young people and, and schooling. Mm -hmm. You know, how important school is, you know. Um, I dropped out of school at a young age, you know, which I, I wish I would have stayed in school, but, you know, but everything happened for a reason, the circumstances and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't wish that on nobody else, you know right. what I'm saying? I don't wish that on our young people because I know school is the foundation. You know, you go to school to get that foundation and get that knowledge and it helps you to, to go on to, to the next level. You know, and I always um, say to, you know, you got so many young people, guys, they, the young kids, that's what I'm talking about, the guys, mm -hmm. they look at it to where football with sports and, and basketball and music is the way out. Yeah. You know, and all of them bank on that. Right. But it's on a small percentage make it out with music and, 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 and um and sports and stuff like that. Right. So my, my thing is education is the way out. Mm -hmm. Education is the way out. If you get your education and then you you able to go to college, right. you can get out the hood and go to any college you want to if you got good grades. They'll send any college around the around the country, right? Yeah. And then that's your way out the hood. Yeah. Right. So what what would you say about school um, what advice would you give any other young people about school? I would say definitely stay in school, of course. But like you were saying about the music and the sports, they feel like that's the only way out. Mm -hmm. I feel like you can stay in school and still do that at the same time, right. you know. Um, you don't have to like put school to the side or feel like education is just not enough. When actually it is what you need to get further in life. And that saying, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. Well, they may say that, but they're going to actually want you to be a part of a company or a business because of your experience and what your resume says. Right. So, stay in school. Um, I'll also say like, if you're willing to like go to college and you get a scholarship or whatever, I would say learn something and use those tactics in like real life because a lot of people go to college and don't learn anything. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I feel like if I could like go back for a couple more mm -hmm. years to college, I would probably be like more focused and really read more and I feel like that's the struggle with some of us we don't like to really read Correct, yes. and that's knowledge that's right. so it's good to just like read every day if you're, even if you're not in school read so I've been trying to do that more it's just like reading and stuff like that um and do my research even like google you know we have google if you want to know something that's right just go to Google. That's right. Now, what do you think about um, how important is it to having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Um, I feel like it's very important. And the reason why I say that is because um, there's nothing we can actually do without him. I mean, that in saying, like, you have to have a strong mind. And I know in my weakest times, when I didn't, go to God or when I wasn't praying that was like I was weak like right. seriously I knew I couldn't do nothing without God like when I started to pray and focus more on God when I would actually get on the pulpit and have to sing like I felt the difference you know mm -hmm. so I felt like when I tried to pull away from God I felt like 
I had nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I felt like there was no soul or spiritual anything left in me to where I felt like there was life. So, having a relationship and just not really giving up and just keeping my faith was important. Um, it was hard at times, but me being a PK, I just felt like it was a part of my lifestyle. That's all I've known. Right, right. So, I stuck with that. And when I wanted to pull away, I was like, God, oh, you got to really help me because this ain't me. <laughs> and this ain't how I want to be and this not how I want to feel. Right, right. You know, so it just doesn't feel right. Right, right. So, I didn't feel right. And when I don't feel right, it's just when I go to God and talk to God, I'd be like, fix me, cleanse right. me, yeah. get my mind back on the right track because this ain't it. And that's that's good that, I mean, you're a, you're a young woman, you know what I'm saying? You're young. Yeah. And, you, and you choosing God right now. Yeah. You know, you got so many people that's, that's young your age, you know, people wait till they get older yeah. and then want to choose God. Right. So that, that, that's very powerful and inspiring and motivating that, that you're young and you chose God at a young age and you know that, you know, God is the one that's going to help you to get to where you need to be by following Him. Yeah. And follow what He designed. So that's good. And let me ask you something. What advice would you give someone that's wanting to get started with everything, like what, what you're doing? Um... I would say actually have a plan. It's very detailed. Like write down your goals and what you really want to accomplish in a time period. Because I felt like I failed at that when I started out with Young Gold Mines. I didn't have a plan. So in that time period, it took me five years to actually make a successful website that actually... Um, got people's attention to want to know more about what YGM is. Mm -hmm. So having a plan is key and knowing what you want to do, knowing who you want to reach and that's pretty much key. That's what's up, that's the key. Y'all heard what she said. Any more last any more last advice you would like to share with anybody to view an audience? Um love yourself. Never, like, um, give up on yourself and others. There's a lot of people that may be actually depending on you to actually bring them out of the situation that they may be going through. So just stay focused and keep pushing and always keep God first. That is key. Continue to pray and be confident within yourself and everything that you do. Don't forget to read because that's knowledge. <laughs> Right. <laughs> that's, that's key. And I think that's pretty much it. Now, if somebody want to get in contact with you and they're trying to find you, if you have some sites or anything they can go to, how can they find you? Um, younggoldminds.com. We also have a Facebook, Young Gold Minds. And our email, younggoldminds at gmail.com. And that's pretty much it. We also have an app. It's on Android. And then it's coming on Apple soon. But yeah. All right, y'all heard it right here with the Prison to Power show with your big bro, KO. Listen, see y'all next weekend, man. Back again Tuesday at 8 o'clock next week with your big bro, KO. I appreciate y'all tuning in to next week. I'm going to holler. Peace. Peace.